<laughs> Reba McIntyre is more than a singing sensation in the world of country music. She's a force of nature. Her career has been filled with unpredictable run-ins with tragedy, but nothing could hold her back from claiming victory in every phase. She's demonstrated that when life brings you down with a heartbreak, you can transform it into a chart-topping hit. Here is Reba McIntyre's life, rise to fame, love, and heartbreak. Number 8. Early Life Reba McIntyre's path from humble beginnings on a ranch in Chalky, Oklahoma, to becoming a country music sensation is rich with heart and tenacity. Her parents, Clark and Jacqueline McIntyre, gave birth to her as the third of four children in the McIntyre family in 1955. Her upbringing in a ranching family shaped her strong work ethic and unyielding spirit. The McIntyre family had significant roots in the world of rodeo. Reba's grandpa, John Wesley McIntyre, was a world champion steer roper in 1934, laying the groundwork for the family. Clark McIntyre, her father, was a three-time world champion in the rodeo arena. It was obvious that greatness ran in their bloodline. Reba's mother, Jacqueline McIntyre, had her own dreams of becoming a country singer. However, she eventually chose a career in teaching, working as a public school teacher, librarian, and secretary. While her mother's love was tender and loving, Reba's father, Clark, struggled to articulate his feelings. Reba had expressed in her book her childhood longing for her father to express his affection. The McIntyres also took over the management of a cattle ranch in Chalky. Every member of the family, from the children to the parents, pitched in on the daily chores. These jobs involved difficult work. A mutual passion for music began to blossom among the McIntyre siblings in the midst of ranch life, nourished by their mother. Jacqueline McIntyre trained her children to sing in perfect harmony while driving to see their father's rodeo performances. Reba's singing career began in first grade when she performed Away in a Manger at an elementary school Christmas pageant. By fifth grade, she had already joined the 4-H club and won first place in the junior act division, singing My Sweet Little Alice Blue Gown. Reba, on the other hand, was a well-rounded individual who excelled in athletics, including basketball and track. Her summers were spent attending basketball clinics and refining her athletic abilities. She also learned to play the piano and guitar, showcasing her artistic flexibility. Reba's interest in rodeo was not confined to her appreciation for her father's accomplishments. She hoped to be a barrel racer herself, demonstrating her desire to carry on the family legacy. She was a young woman with dreams as big as the Oklahoma sky, and she was determined to go after them with everything she had. The McIntyre siblings had established a well-known presence in their local music scene as high school neared. They decided to start a group called The Singing McIntyres, in 1971, they released The Ballad of John McIntyre, a record devoted to their famous grandfather. This song was pressed by a local label and distributed in limited quantities throughout the region, marking the beginning of Reba's music career. The trio eventually grew to incorporate a backing band and began performing at local events and clubs. This dynamic group was later dubbed the Kiowa High School Cowboy Band. Reba recalls those days fondly, characterizing the group as a collection of kids barely out of adolescence who frequently didn't go to bed until the early hours of the morning after their gigs. However, as life progressed, the band eventually disbanded, with Reba's brother graduating from high school in 1973. Number 7. College and a Life-Changing Opportunity Reba enrolled in college at Southeastern Oklahoma State University after graduating from high school, which was a significant milestone in her schooling. She chose to major in elementary education with a minor in music. She continued to help with the family ranch while attending college, demonstrating that her strong work ethic remained intact, even as her musical goals beckoned. She completed her student teaching and eventually received her bachelor's degree, displaying her dedication to her education as well as her family. A big opportunity arrived in 1974 that would profoundly alter Reba's life. 
Her father persuaded her to perform the Star Spangled Banner at the Oklahoma City National Finals Rodeo. This defining encounter prompted Reba to call a family friend and rodeo announcer, Clem McSpadden, who was instrumental in securing her this opportunity. Reba's heavenly voice boomed around the arena, grabbing the attention of country singer Red Stegall, who was deeply impacted by her performance. Reba, her siblings, and her mother were then invited to join Red Stegall for a hotel party that same week. At this event, Reba performed an a cappella version of Dolly Parton's Joshua, which left everyone in the audience speechless. Jacqueline McIntyre spotted an opportunity and asked Red Stegall if he could help her secure recording contracts for all of her children. When Stegall returned to Nashville, he called her and said that he couldn't take all three. But if Reba was available, he'd support her singing career. In his own words, she's got something a little unique. Reba McIntyre's rise to stardom began with this. Reba took a life-changing trip to Nashville, Tennessee with her mother in March 1975 to record a demonstration tape that would be shared with record labels. The road to Nashville was not without difficulties, and Reba had concerns about pursuing a professional country music career at first. She found herself creating excuses to get out of the car while driving. Jacqueline McIntyre, a pillar of unflinching love and maternal wisdom, helped her daughter through this critical period. Jacqueline acknowledged her deep love and stated that her dreams had been interwoven with Reba's aspirations in a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Her comments had an impact on Reba's soul, altering the path of their adventure. Reba McIntyre then opted to continue her journey to Nashville, motivated by her mother's unwavering faith in her abilities and potential. This decision signaled the beginning of a career that would grab hearts while surpassing country music's boundaries. Number 6. Struggle and Success Reba McIntyre's musical journey seemed to be guided by destiny in a way that was both purposeful and serendipitous. A cassette recording of her was heard by Glenn Keener of Polygram Mercury Records, who recognized her enormous potential and was ready to offer her a Nashville contract. This pivotal decision would alter the path of her life for the rest of her life. Keener stood at the crossroads of a life-altering decision, clutching McIntyre's tape and another recording by a fellow female singer. In a fateful split second, he carefully weighed the two recordings in his possession. With unshakable faith in her skill, Keener prioritized Reba's tape, a decision that would become a watershed moment in country music history. He looked at the two tapes in his hand and handed a mine, Reba said in an interview with Entertainment Weekly, sealing her fate with one single move. Reba McIntyre signed her first country music recording contract with Polygram Mercury Records on November 1975, marking it a life-altering moment in her journey to realize her aspirations and share her musical talent with the world. The groundwork was laid for her to make her first recordings for the label, in January 1976. Glenn Keener directed McIntyre's Country Politan arrangement, which incorporated the sumptuous accompaniment of a string group. This was the start of a journey full of promise and opportunity. Reba's first single, I Don't Wanna Be a One Night Stand, hit the charts in 1976. Despite carrying the weight of her hopes and dreams, it did not reach the pinnacle of success that she had envisioned. The song made it onto the Billboard Hot Country Songs list, albeit it only reached number 88 in May of that year. Following this initial failure, two more songs failed to make an impression. There's Nothing Like the Love Between a Woman and Man and Glad I Waited Just for You. In 1977, Mercury Records released her self-titled debut album, exposing Reba to the world as an up-and-coming country artist. In his review of the album, Greg Adams of All Music compared her style to that of musicians like Barbara Mandrell and Tammy Wynette. McIntyre frequently found herself without a dedicated band as she delved into live performances and tours. She relied on house bands to offer musical accompaniment in these cases. These backup bands were unfamiliar with country music in some less than ideal situations, causing McIntyre to enliven her time on stage with humor and jokes as she handled the obstacles of adapting to new musical surroundings. McIntyre's career took a turn in 1978 when she started a collaborative endeavor with fellow country artist Jackie Ward. 
Their publication of I'd Really Love to See You Tonight and Three Sheets in the Wind marked a big milestone for her as it became her first top 20 country chart hit. This success led to more possibilities and increased her fan base, establishing her as a rising star in the country music scene. Changes in the Polygram Mercury Records roster resulted in the transfer of the torch from Glenn Keener to producer Jerry Kennedy over time. Reba McIntyre worked with Kennedy on her second studio album, Out of a Dream, which was released in the 1979. This album featured a cover of Patsy Cline's classic, Sweet Dreams, which became her first top 20 hit as a solo artist. Reba McIntyre made an emotional announcement on December 15, 2016, that touched the souls of her fans and marked the beginning of a new chapter in her brilliant career. She announced intentions to record her first gospel album, Sing It Now, Songs of Faith and Amp Hope, a tribute to her everlasting faith and musical flexibility. This was a deeply personal effort for McIntyre, reflecting her ideals and the musical tradition that she had long held dear. The album, which was published on February 3, 2017, by Nash Icon Rockin' R Records, was a double-disc offering. Disc 1 was devoted to traditional hymns, cherished masterpieces that had weathered the test of time. Disc 2, on the other hand, had unique tunes that expressed McIntyre's faith and hope. The ballad, Softly and Tenderly, featuring the vocals of two strong artists, Kelly Clarkson and Trisha Yearwood, was one of the album's poignant highlights. This moving rendition was the album's first single, setting the tone for the emotional trip McIntyre was about to go on. Another standout from Sing It Now was In the Garden Wonderful Peace, which featured the Isaacs. The album, which is filled with emotional and soul-stirring music, was produced by Rascal Flatts' J. DeMarcus, who lent his touch to create a harmonizing and spiritually uplifting compilation. This spiritually motivated project's debut hit was Back to God. With its insightful lyrics and heartfelt rendition by McIntyre, the song struck a chord with her audience, serving as a reminder of the healing power of faith and the significance of reconnecting with one's spiritual foundation. Reba McIntyre had a career-defining moment in January 2018 when she won the prestigious Grammy Award for Best Roots Gospel Album. This achievement was not only a testimonial to her enduring brilliance, but also a heartwarming return to the spotlight, as it was her first Grammy Award win in more than two decades since 1994. It was a moment of appreciation that celebrated her dedication to her craft and her ability to profoundly and meaningfully touch the hearts of her listeners. Number five, a great actor. Reba McIntyre entered a new area of creation in 1990 when she landed her first film role. Yes, that's right, she was an all-rounder from the beginning and her excellence was not limited to her vocal prowess. She was an equally phenomenal actress. Reba played Heather Gummer in the horror comedy Tremors, a one-of-a-kind cinematic event in which she co-starred with Kevin Bacon. This film told the story of a close-knit Nevada community dealing with subterranean worm-like organisms that endangered their way of life. Tremors gave McIntyre a tempting view into the world of acting, reigniting her passion for the craft and paving the path for her to pursue a second profession. Fast forward to September 2011, and McIntyre was ready to return to the small screen. She revealed on her website that ABC had approved the development of a pilot for her next television series, Malibu Country. McIntyre portrayed a divorced mother of two navigating life's twists and turns as she moves to Malibu, California, in quest of rekindling her singing career in this series. This fascinating premise marked the beginning of a new chapter in McIntyre's television career. The pilot episode of Malibu Country was shot in April 2012, and the show went into full production for its first season in August of the same year. McIntyre and her followers were ecstatic when the pilot's much-anticipated debut date was set for November 2, 2012. McIntyre's abilities, however, extended beyond acting and television hosting. She had the distinction of hosting the NASCAR Awards show in Las Vegas demonstrating her versatility and ability to connect with a wide range of people. McIntyre returned to the big screen in 2023, appearing in Reba McIntyre's The Hammer on Lifetime. She reconnected with her former Reba sitcom co-star, Melissa Peterman, in this film, 
which was inspired by the life of traveling Nevada Circuit Judge Kim Wanker. Rex Lynn, McIntyre's real-life partner, played Bart Crawford, a mystery cowboy with hidden motivations, and Kay Shioma Mechi played Vicky, the tough-talking bailiff who acted as Kim's loyal right-hand companion. McIntyre's participation in this production highlighted her lifelong love of acting and storytelling. As 2023 unfolded, Reba McIntyre's talents found a new stage as she joined The Voice as a coach, stepping into the spotlight previously occupied by Blake Shelton. She assumed the role of a coach for season 24 of the popular talent competition, sharing the platform with fellow coaches Gwen Stefani, Niall Horan, and John Legend. This marked yet another exciting chapter in her career, where she could lend her expertise and guidance to aspiring musicians. McIntyre had a compelling reunion with Sophie Dossie on September 20, 2023, when they cooperated during a results show on season 18 of America's Got Talent. McIntyre's beautiful voice filled the room as she performed Can't Even Get the Blues, while Dossie captivated the audience with her contortion, hand balancing, and aerial feats. This moment demonstrated McIntyre's enduring popularity and ability to captivate listeners with her musical abilities. Reba McIntyre evolved and explored new areas of creative expression throughout her illustrious career. Number 4. Heartbreaks and Aches Reba McIntyre, the iconic country music icon, has had a long and successful career. Yet, like every other human, her life has been characterized by tremendous personal importance including grief. Despite her stunning success and accolades, McIntyre's life has been impacted by both joy and pain, and her journey through heartbreak has only added dimension to her incredible story. Reba McIntyre endured the most heartbreaking time of her life in 1990 when eight of her bandmates passed away in an aircraft disaster. The ensemble was on its route to Indiana for a performance on March 16 when their charter plane crashed in California. The catastrophe, which killed McIntyre's tour manager and seven band members, rocked her to her core. This was a difficult time of tremendous loss that devastated her and her family. McIntyre's faith was essential in helping her cope and find peace in the face of this heartbreaking catastrophe. She resorted to her religious views for strength and consolation, drawing on her Christian faith. McIntyre's profound faith in God and the power of prayer became a guiding force in her life, guiding her through this dark and chaotic period. Even in the face of such great loss, her religion enabled her to discover resilience. The termination of McIntyre's first marriage was another heartbreaking chapter in her personal life. McIntyre married rodeo steer wrestler Charlie Battles in 1976, and they were married for over a decade. Their paths eventually diverged, as they often do in the complexity of life and love. McIntyre and Battles divorced in 1987 after making the painful decision to split ways. Marriage breakdown is a heartbreaking process for everyone, and McIntyre was no exception. She dealt with the emotional toll of the breakup, navigating the difficulties of closing a key chapter in her life. Following her divorce from Charlie Battles, McIntyre remarried her manager, Narvel Blackstock, in 1989. Shelby, their son, was born in 1990, and the two formed a life together. For more than two decades, their marriage appeared to be a fairy tale, a love story that withstood the strains of the entertainment world. However, love stories often take unexpected turns, and at 2015, McIntyre and Blackstock announced their divorce thereby ending their marriage. This separation brought back the agony of losing a loved one. The end of a long and happy marriage, especially one as public as theirs, was a difficult chapter in McIntyre's personal life. Despite the pain that has accompanied her path, Reba McIntyre's tenacious spirit and tenacity have helped her to emerge even stronger. Now let's check out today's subscriber pick. Reba's two marriages may have ended up in flames, but that doesn't mean she had closed her heart to finding love. She revealed in an interview that she started dating actor and her longtime friend Rex Lynn after her mother Jacqueline got sick in the pandemic. The couple have known each other since 1991 when they starred together in the Gambler movie together with Kenny Rogers. According to Reba, since that film, they remained in contact with each other. She told a news outlet, We'd gotten to see each other before because we're both on Young Sheldon, 
So starting in March of 2020, we just kept talking and visiting and finally got together, saw each other in June, and we've been pretty much inseparable ever since. Reba seems to have found love in an old friend after going through two divorces. She is proof that it's never too late to find a companion who makes your life better. Do you know someone who got lucky in love late in life like Reba? Let us know in the comments below. Number three, accolades. Reba McIntyre's incredible career has been marked by several honors, firmly establishing her place as a real luminary in the world of country music. Her career has been distinguished by numerous accomplishments, cementing her place in the hearts of fans and industry insiders alike. Her enormous collection of honors is one of her most notable achievements. McIntyre has the second most victories for the Academy of Country Music's Top Female Vocalist Awards, with a total of seven. This honor recognizes her continuing brilliance as well as the persistent support of her devoted fan base. McIntyre's remarkable impact on the music industry is also reflected in the American Music Awards. She is an unrivaled force in the world of country music, having won 12 awards for favorite country female artist. Her accomplishments span generations, as proven by this long list of achievements. Reba McIntyre's reign as a female country vocalist is legendary. She's the only performer in history to win the Country Music Association's Female Vocalist of the Year Award four times in a row. This astounding accomplishment established a bar that few have been able to match. While other singers such as Martina McBride and Miranda Lambert have won this award several times, they have not been able to repeat the feat. Carrie Underwood joined this exclusive club in 2016 when she won her fourth Female Vocalist Award demonstrating McIntyre's continuing legacy. McIntyre's influence is not limited to a single era. It spans four decades and achievement achieved by only a few. In addition to her wins and achievements, McIntyre holds nomination records. With 51 nominations, she holds the record for the most Country Music Association Award nominations for a female performer. Her ongoing influence may also be seen in the Academy of Country Music Awards, where she has the most nominations by a female performer. Her continued recognition across these major platforms demonstrates the industry's tremendous respect and appreciation for her. McIntyre's abilities have been recognized well beyond the hallowed halls of country music. She has three Grammy Awards indicating that her musical prowess has been recognized by the music industry's most distinguished honor. Her Grammy wins in 1987, 1994, and 2018 show the range and depth of her artistic accomplishments. McIntyre was awarded the Kennedy Center Honor in December 2018, recognizing her outstanding contributions to American culture and the performing arts. It was an appropriate recognition of her lasting impact on music and entertainment, acknowledging her as a true luminary in the business. Her career has been filled with notable milestones, including her Grand Ole Opry debut on September 17, 1977. Even that night, however, was not without difficulties, as security at the Opry Gate originally overlooked her name on the list of performers. McIntyre persisted, delivering a spectacular three-minute debut. Her family, which included her parents and older sister Alice, traveled 1,400 miles round trip from their Oklahoma home to witness this historic moment. Her set was cut down from two songs to one, Invitation to the Blues, due to a surprise arrival by none other than Dolly Parton. McIntyre's entry into the Country Music Hall of Fame was announced by the Country Music Association in 2011, confirming her place among country music's most renowned figures. She attended the official induction ceremony with fellow inductees Gene Shepard and Bobby Braddock, Number two, more than a celebrity. Philanthropy has played an important role in Reba McIntyre's life, and her unrelenting commitment to humanitarian causes has had an indelible effect on various organizations and communities. Her philanthropic efforts, which span several decades, demonstrate a great sense of compassion and a strong desire to make a positive difference in the world. One of McIntyre's first charitable endeavors was the establishment of Reba's Ranch House near Denison, Texas, in 1992. This activity showed her willingness to support and comfort those in need. Reba's Ranch House provided shelter and peace 
to families of patients undergoing medical care at neighboring hospitals. This outstanding effort provided a lifeline to numerous families dealing with the emotional and financial strains of medical crises. McIntyre's notion for the ranch house arose from her own observations of the difficulties faced by families seeking medical treatment for their loved ones. Her effort to alleviate their burden, provide a home away from home, and provide assistance during their difficult times demonstrated her real philanthropic commitment. McIntyre has continually proved her commitment to charity causes throughout her distinguished career. She has actively sponsored a wide range of organizations, each of which reflects her core ideals and ideas. Among the many groups that have benefited from her continuous support is Habitat for Humanity, a nonprofit organization dedicated to creating affordable housing for those in need. Her participation in Habitat for Humanity demonstrates her belief in the necessity of shelter and the fundamental human right to a safe and stable home. The Salvation Army, known for its disaster relief, community support, and assistance to the less fortunate, has also benefited from McIntyre's charitable efforts. Her contributions have helped to fund programs and initiatives that aid individuals and families in times of hardship. The American Red Cross, a name linked with humanitarian aid and disaster relief, has also benefited from McIntyre's generosity. Her contributions have been critical in ensuring that the American Red Cross can continue to save lives, provide disaster relief, and assist those in need. Feeding America, the nation's largest hunger relief group, has also benefited from McIntyre's generosity. Her passion for solving food insecurity and hunger demonstrates her unshakable commitment to improving the lives of vulnerable communities. McIntyre has earned numerous distinguished awards and medals in appreciation of her exceptional efforts and deep impact on the world of philanthropy. McIntyre received the Mini Pearl Award, named for the legendary country comedian and singer, in recognition of her remarkable humanitarian endeavors. This award recognized her dedication to making a difference in the lives of others and her long legacy of community service. The Andrea Bocelli Foundation Humanitarian Award is just another honor that recognizes McIntyre's extraordinary commitment to humanitarian issues. This prize, named after the legendary Italian singer Andrea Bocelli, recognizes her relentless efforts to make the world a better place via charity work. McIntyre received the coveted Horatio Alger Award for Education and Charity Work in 2018. This award, named after the legendary author Horatio Alger, honors people who have surmounted adversity and shown steadfast perseverance while simultaneously giving back to their communities. McIntyre's acceptance of this honor was a monument to her incredible journey, as well as her steadfast devotion to education and charity. Reba McIntyre's charitable path exemplifies how one person's dedication and compassion can have a great impact on the lives of many others. Her actions have touched the hearts of those in need and motivated others to join her in making a difference in the world. Number 1. What's next for Reba? Reba's fans are moved by her stories of love and heartache. She fell in love twice, only to have both marriages end in divorce. Though deeply personal, her heartbreak experiences became a vital element of her storytelling. Her music gave voice to the emotions we all experience in our daily lives, love, loss, and the will to live. The famous singing show The Voice is increasing the number of coaches for season 25, which will air in 2024, with a star-studded lineup of coaches. In an exciting twist, the coaching panel for the forthcoming season will include not four, but five legendary stars, including Reba Reba McIntyre's return to The Voice, promises to bring her distinct knowledge, experience, and musical prowess to the table. Reba has also recently starred in the hit Big Bang Theory spin-off called Young Sheldon. She may resume her recurrent role in the show as per speculations, but the one thing Reba won't be doing is quitting. She has had a wonderful career spanning almost three decades now and aspires to keep entertaining the world through her art. We hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one.